I am pretty sure you would agree when I say you are never too old for having an advent calendar. Am I right? <laughs> okay, but where to get one? Well, if you are a junk journaler, I guess the answer is pretty easy. Just make one by yourself and especially for yourself. And if your name is Luise Heinzel, <laughs> that's my name. If you don't know me and if you are new here, that's my name. I'm Luise Heinzel. <laughs> Then it is a fact that <laughs> your brain sometimes works a little different. I don't know if that is good, but uh, well, it is what it is. And then you perhaps come to an idea where you think, okay, that is something the world hasn't seen yet. <laughs> I don't know if that is necessary, but I think I found an idea for making an adv advent calendar, which we haven't seen yet. Not that it is important that we do something that the world has not seen yet, but I just want to share this idea with you and I want to make an advent calendar for myself, obviously. So welcome to this video. We are going to make a snippet roll advent calendar today, which is growing in December. So that is the first thing I thought. When you have an advent calendar, then normally the the advent cal calendar gets empty in December because you take things out and you eat them or play with them depending on what the advent calendar content is. But it gets empty. <laughs> and I want to make something that is going to be filled up and which is growing in December. And for that, I want to make a snippet roll. And then later on, I will explain everything, how I think that that can work. And the thing is, you can use what we make in this video after December as well. So this is a thing. Uh, I want to mm, make this not so extreme. No, I, I want to. Uh, sorry, I don't want to make this Christmassy at all. But of course, you could do that. I will make mine really neutral because I like that. And with my idea that you can use this stuff then later for junk journaling, it's perhaps a little better to make it like neutral because then the possibilities where I can use this up later and where I can play with it are a little bigger. Do you know what I mean? If I would make it Christmas themed, then I could only use it in Christmas journals. So, but please feel free to make it as Christmassy as you like. So we have this. This is just a piece of fabric. It's, it's just from an um, old pillowcase. And I have just cut some pieces of lace and put them, as you can see, in these little rows here. Mm, that doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to have rows in this direction of course you could do this whole thing also with paper you don't necessarily need fabric and lace you could also take some paper and glue strips of paper on here but i want to have my snippet roll really flexible and really you know i love this feeling of touching lace and i also want to use some of ooh, some of this chaos up i have a really big box here with some snippets of lace and i want to use that up and the snippet roll is of course the perfect uh, place for doing that but you could do this with paper as well i will go to my sewing machine now if you don't have a sewing machine just use some textile glue and glue all of the stuff together that works as well If you have a sewing machine, I can recommend to use the sewing machine because when you sew these pieces on, the whole thing stays more flexible. With glue, in my opinion, it always gets a little more stiff because when the glue dries, it gets a little stiff. But that is also not a problem. It's just like a tactile thing that this stuff gets then a little stiff but it's not a problem it would work with glue as well so i will take this and take this to my sewing machine this will probably change a little bit in order because you know it's loose you could clamp it here but i don't give myself that stress i just take it to my sewing machine and sew it on here because the order of this stuff 
doesn't really matter. So here we go. When this is sewn, it looks like this. And now I want to cut this into strips, but in this direction. Remember, we have added the lace in this direction, horizontally. And now I want to cut it vertically into strips. To make my life easier, I turn this around. Oh, what am I doing with my ruler? I already found out that it doesn't work with my ruler so well. Where is my, where is my template, which I made? Holy moly. Here we go, I found it. I've just taken a piece of a little sturdier paper. This is just some watercolor paper, but it doesn't matter. It just has to be a little bit sturdy so that it's not too flimsy. And this is seven centimeters in width because I want to have my snippet roll seven centimeters wide later. So I'm going to take this. And the first thing I do is I make with my template a little line here on the edge so that I later on can cut it straight there. Because all of the strips I cut from here now, I want to attach to each other later so that I get then one long strip and for that, I want to have that this is, you know, as straight and correct as possible, even if it's really hard to do this on the fabric. But, you know, we don't freak our freaks about a millimeter, <laughs> but I don't want this to be like, like so, yeah, because that would make my life really hard. So when I have that, I take this and I put it to this line. So I just go on here and do this on the whole sheet of this fabric lace stuff next we are going to need some paper I have these coffee dyed index cards here. These are a little sturdier. I've chosen this material because then I can attach it easier here when it's a little thicker then I have this circle punch here, but you can also use your scissors, of course, or a die cut, for example. And we need 25 little things, for example, buttons. I like to use buttons because I have tons of buttons. <laughs> that is just cute. And I, of course, also want to use them up. I have the collection of buttons from my grandma and my mother, and that are thousands of buttons. I have a whole cabinet with buttons and I need to use them up and of course I like to use buttons but you could also alternatively use for example bottle caps or some round or it doesn't have to be round you can also use like uh, squared pieces from for example old games or so perhaps you have these game chips or how are those called M made from thicker material um, or you could even use postage stamps, for example, or anything else that you have or like, which you want to add to your snippet roll during December. I want to have this really hmm, cozy somehow. So I think buttons are great, but please use what you have. And now I want to punch 25 circles. I have done, um, I, I'm sorry, I have chosen this punch. And I um, have chosen it because the smallest button I have fits on here, like so, so that the circle is not peeking out too much here, so that we won't see the paper later. Because this is only like, um, how do you say that in English, like a placeholder for the button. So this will mark where the buttons will be attached during December. That will make sense in a second. I will punch out 25 of these circles and then I will show you how I will do that. It's a little hard for me to explain. <laughs> I think I haven't had enough coffee today. <sighs> okay, so these are 25 of the circles now. So then we are going to take a pen or you could also stamp this or however you want to do that. And we are going to write the numbers from 1 to 25 on these. So when we have prepared all of these little guys with the numbers, it's very important to take a sip of coffee first <laughs> because we have to make a tiny decision now before we can go on. 
with the decoration of this. And this decision is regarding to the direction we want to use the advent calendar later. Let me try to explain that. Please imagine all of these five strips are already attached to each other so that we have one single long strip. The plan is then to roll the whole thing up so that we then in the end have a very big and giant and really wonderful snippet roll advent calendar. And now it's depending on if you want to use it like this and roll it out like this so that it is um, vertically used or if you want to have it like this and you roll it out like this so the roll is on the left and what's coming out here is on the right or, <laughs> and that's the third possibility, if you want to have it like this and roll it out like this so that the roll is on the right and what comes out here is on the left. Because I want to have the numbers here in the end glued down so that we know where we can attach the buttons during the month of December. Meaning when I have it like this and the numbers are in this direction, on December 1st, I take my first button and glue or sew it on here. On December 2nd, I take my second button and glue or sew it on here and so on so that this advent calendar gets filled up with the buttons during December. Here with the buttons, the direction doesn't make a big difference at this moment because when I see it like this and the numbers are here like so, yeah, well, who cares? I can still read this, yeah? But if I have it like so, it's way nicer. Of course, if I want to use it like this, and it would be not so nice if I have it like this, then the numbers are wrong, yeah? Do you know what I mean? So please decide that now. And the second thing is, and that is way more important because this is, this is just a tiny visual thing, but if you want to decorate your snippet roll, with things that have a direction, like photos, for example, and you would have it like so, and the numbers are here, you would probably attach the photos like so, so that the person on the photo is in the correct direction. If you had this whole thing like so, and you would roll it up like this, then the photo would be in the wrong direction. Do you know what I mean? So please decide about the direction you want to use it now. So once you have made the decision about that, and uh, I still have to do that <laughs> because um, I have made the snippet roll advent calendar in my German video in this direction so that it can hang. I will show you that in this video later as well, how I can imagine to use it. Then it can hang and it can roll out like this, but I want to do it different for this one so that I can compare later what I like better. I think I would prefer, yeah, I prefer to have it like so, so that the roll is on the left and it rolls out to the right. Somehow that makes sense to me. So then when we have made that decision, I would say the easiest way to don't freak out <laughs> is to put the strips like so in the direction you have decided for. If you have decided to use it like this, then please put the strips to your table like this now, in this direction. But since I've decided for the other direction, I do it like this, and I put them all <clears throat> next to each other here, so that I can do everything at once. <laughs> so then that means if my the rolled up piece of my snippet roll is on the left and I roll it out to the right, then here is the place for the number one. So I place this here. I need five uh, places for the buttons on each of the strips. So I, one, two, three, four, ooh, one more. I need to put them a little closer to each other. Will I measure this? Definitely not, <laughs> you know me. I will eyeball this just like this so that the distance is approximately the same. I will not glue these down now. I will just place them here so that I have an orientation. In the end, this strip will be attached here, there where the five is. You know, I will attach it here 
So that means when here is the 5 on the next strip, the 6 has to go here. And then I can look here so that I have approximately the same distance. That is really easy. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <clears throat> This strip will get attached there. So then the 11 has to go here. This strip is going to be attached there. So when here is the 15, we need the 16 here and so on. So I can already place all of these little guys here. And then I can go to my stash and search for whatever I like to attach here. That can be whatever you have, like tiny pieces of paper. I have, for example, a drawer with snippets here like, you know, uh, random pieces of something. <laughs> also really <laughs> tiny pieces. You can also, of course, use more buttons. I also thought about attaching some buttons with bulb pins. Please also use up the things you have in your stash for forever. <laughs> like, for example, really old postage stamps which you've made during one year of Defemoremba. <laughs> I don't know why I still have these here, but I want to use these today. I don't want to make this very Christmassy. I think I said that already in the beginning because I want to use the pieces of the or single pieces of the snippet roll later on in my journals. Yeah, so I will use butterflies as a theme and some people in a second. But of course you could also use only Christmas related images or butterflies which are for example green and red so that they are Christmassy or so. Yeah, please do what you like. I also have this ticket here. This is also a really historical fragment of Defemoremba. <laughs> There are videos available about how I made this and also these. I will link them down below for you. So we can use some of these up. And I have also taken out some tickets from my stash. Yeah, you can use whatever you have. And I have these. These are from my shop. This is a digital printable ephemera pack, which is called Labels Der Schrank. Der Schrank, that is German, and that means the cabinet. And I have digitalized some labels, which I found in the cabinet I bought for my craft room here. And um, I found these so cute and so cool, so that I decided that I digitalize, or that is not the word, D digitize, digitize. I think digitalize, that is not a word, is it? Digitize, I think, is the right word. But it doesn't matter. These are cute if you want to have them uh, because, you know, they come from my my schrank. And if you want to have them as well, then please check out the description box. There's a link where you can get them and print them out and then you can have them. I want to include some of those as well. And then I have some butterflies here. Mm, this is a really wild mix. Here are also some other like focal point thingies in here. I have to reorganize this little container here. But um, you can also find some fuzzy cut butterflies in my shop. I will also link those down below for you. So these, for example, come from my shop. And um, also something like this you could use. This is also from my shop. Um, yeah, if you want, then check them out if you need butterflies. Um, I have some feelers for them here and what I also have here is my basket with my mini paper dolls. I think these are a really great size for using them on here. Um, if you, and there's something that I want to quickly want to mention before we go on, no matter what you use, if you use people or butterflies or whatever, please make sure that the material you use is not too crazily stiff and not too thin. What am I trying to say? This here, for example, I would say is on the edge of too thin. It's, it's still okay. But, you know, when you touch this and you imagine this is rolled up later, imagine if that then can be sturdy enough. If this would be too thick, For example, 
I think it's not such a good idea to use these photo booth photos because they are pretty heavy. And if you imagine you would roll these, I mean, I will ruin this photo now, but please imagine it will be, will roll and then it will get bent. You look, then you have this damage here. Yeah, and that is probably not so nice. If, oh, I just, oh, I just think, I mean, you could turn this problem into an artsy element of your snippet roll by, <laughs> I just, I'm just, oh my goodness, perhaps we can do it there as well. Because look, if you, oh my goodness, I'm just realizing that if you are on the grungy side of junk journaling, do this with the photo because it's just sturdy enough. Oh my goodness, I haven't thought about that before. Originally, I wanted to say something totally different, but uh, now my brain tells me, why don't you do it like this? I mean, this would mean that you need to like grunge, but now, <laughs> I mean, this is sturdy. It will not, look, it will not fall apart. It's sturdy. And if you imagine it's on here, then you can roll the roll up really easily without <laughs> any problems. Yeah, because the photo was destroyed already and you will not destroy it further. Originally, I wanted to say, take something which is not too thin or uh, not too thick like this. But if you do it like this, or can we do that with the paper dolls as well? I mean, how would that then look if we would make them a little flexible? Is that good or is that ugly? Because the paper dolls, are, I would say this is still okay because they are not so solid. Yeah, It's just, you know, when this is here and you roll it up, it would be absolutely no problem to roll it because um, this is so small compared to such a thick photo. Yeah, this is way bigger and you can't roll it up so easily. But I'm just trying to decide if I can do it like this and if I still like it. I think on the paper dolls, I don't like that so much. What do you think? This looks like, I mean, if we imagine this would be on here. No, no, I don't like that. I like it here because this looks like it was done on purpose. Like it's the style of the thing, but this looks just destroyed. But please decide that for yourself. So what I originally was trying to say is um, if you don't have like paper dolls or photos or so you could also check out my shop i have some fuzzy cut people in my shop where you can say okay i print them out cut them out and then i use them for something like this i haven't used my or i will not use my own fuzzy cut people from my shop because i don't have the right paper at hand at the moment to print them out because um yeah the paper i have is just not handy for this i don't want to have something like this in the end and um i just don't have the right paper yeah that's but that's the only reason why i don't use my own fuzzy cut people do you know what i mean what do we do with you now i think you have to go on a journey to the trash can or perhaps <laughs> to the grungy basket of uh, this thing here okay so let's then take some glue and i'm going to start with my labels and these tickets and also these here because they are yeah like pretty big i think this is even this is even a little bit too big for my taste perhaps i can just tear it into pieces then it's a little smaller and then i just take some glue and i start gluing these things on here and now you might think what shall that be that looks a little bit weird it looks like it is not so well attached you are totally right i use not so much glue just the tiniest bit that it is like you know enough that this can hold on here because in a second i will sew over this again if you don't have a sewing machine or if you don't want to use your sewing machine for this, then please make sure that the pieces you attach here now are glued down really well so that they can't fall off later. So I really, without thinking, I mean, that is hard for me. If you know me, you know that that is really hard. Without thinking, I try to put these things on here really randomly, like in between of these numbers so that we get like a first layer of interest here 
and I made the experience that it is really the easiest way to just take the things you have and start gluing them down. When I tried this the first time, <laughs> I tried to first find the positions for these things and then, you know, lay everything down and then glue it. But that was a catastrophe. And I have the feeling, because then everything moves, I have the feeling that uh, it gets nice no matter how you do this now. Just go for it and, it, and just, yeah, just do it. <laughs> we'll look good in the end. So when I have those, I want to add these. And I think I want to add this ticket there where the 25 is. Holy moly, you can't see that. Please believe me, I will, <laughs> I will attach it here where the 25 is. And let's then uh, go on. Let's perhaps take these then. And let's find some nice places oh i really like it here let's just glue this down yeah i really like that and now here for example the 17 is really close to this so we could think to take this off for a second so that we can move this a little more to the left so that we have a nice position for the postage stamp and then this placeholder for the 17th button needs to go somewhere here, of course. So why don't we? I mean, here's this 30 stamped, but why don't we? Let's see how that looks. Do Oh, no, I don't like that. Perhaps like this. Yeah, that is better when it's on the, when it's, you know, half on the lace and half on the postage stamp so I will glue this down already because here is the place for the 17th button does that make sense hopefully okay so we have used these up <clears throat> mm, let's then take this drawer <laughs> I will leave it here on the side so that I can uh, you know I don't have enough space here on my table and I will just take some random pieces from here perhaps also some round things but especially some smaller things because these are pretty big and i will now add more just some random tiny pieces but smaller than the ones i have here already for that for example tea bag labels are really nice i would say or you could also use some postage stamps now or perhaps you have some tiny stamped things some numbers or so if you have made this whole thing from paper then you could consider stamping now i really like stamping <laughs> but in this case i will not do that because on this material of course i can't stamp and that's why I have chosen these labels so that I have some like numbers and what I mean on the labels, there's basically what I would stamp if I could stamp on the lace, meaning there are numbers and interesting writing. So let's then go on and add a little bit more like life <laughs> to this whole thing by choosing some butterflies. I'm really a little bit confused because this <laughs> gets pretty um, colorful somehow, <laughs> to be honest. That was not so planned in the beginning, but it is what it is. And I think it will become really nice. So when we add these, we can, of course, add some feelers. And where is my little... Oh, I found it. Do you know these situations? You have to search 20 minutes for such a piece. It was just right there, but I couldn't see it. So what I was trying to do is I want to add a little bit of fluff. No, not fluff. This, it's not fluff. You know, something interesting, which is not paper, in between of the paper butterfly and the base here so that it gets a little more interesting here i think it will also look nice if we attach the 18 here so that then 
the button can go on the butterfly here like so. I think that looks really nice. And once I made that decision, I just take the number and glue it down here as well. So I will go on and add some more butterflies. And for each of those, I will add a tiny little bit of this to add some interest and also, you know, some feelers. Okay, so then let's take our paper dolls here and let's see where we can include those. I want to have some which are like sitting. I really like that, especially because we have used these labels here. I think it looks really nice when these sit on the edges of the labels. I really like that. And this is obviously not completely glued down now. It can't be because I have just used a few drops of glue here and there. I did that on purpose because I want to take this to my sewing machine again now and sew over this so that the pieces then are really well attached. So here we go. Everything is sewn now and I have also already attached the single strips to each other so that we have one long strip now so you can see here's the five and here's the six i have just taken the pieces put them to my sewing machine and then i've sewn over here after i have done the sewing on the single strips because that is just easier when you have the single strips and you want to do this additional sewing when they are like single then it's of course easier to sew here i would like to hear your opinion I would really appreciate if you would leave a comment about how you like this kind of sewing I think before I did this um, snippet roll advent calendar I have never sewn over butterflies or other focal points paper dolls and so on like I did it here because as you can see I have sewn through their bodies I have avoided of course to sew through their faces or other like weird uh, places <laughs> but how do you like this is that weird do they look like cut or so from the sewing or do you think that is a cool addition well uh, while you th are thinking about that <laughs> and writing the comment of course you can also watch the video to the end first <laughs> I want to add a few of these bulb pins. Oh, this has accidentally opened. What what happened here? Oh my goodness. Well, let's put this back together. Um, it's good to add the bulb pins after you have sewn everything. That is way easier, obviously, than having these bulky things under your sewing machine. But now... You can, of, oh, this is perhaps, is that a good position when a third button is here? No, it's not because then it's really bulky there. Um, but now you can, of course, this was not a good example, Luisa. Mm, you can, of course, decorate this even further by adding, for example, bulb pins with buttons, beads or something similar. You could add safe safety pins as well or um, think about for example beads no um not beads breads what is going on with my brain today i don't know i have the feeling i i have lost my english vocabulary even more than on other days <laughs> i have no idea why but <laughs> this looks really nice perhaps you can also find some of these tiny Christmas ornaments. I mean, I said I don't want to make it too Christmassy. And you can see, I still try to follow my plan <laughs> by, by adding like neutral things. But these things are, of course, removable. Yeah, so when you think, okay, I want to have on my bulb pins some Christmas ornaments, 
you could do that. And even if you would then later on like to use your snippet roll pieces in junk journals or on cards or wherever, uh, projects which are not Christmas themed, you can take these off and add them to another project, exchange them with something else, and then, you know, you can have both things at the same time. A Christmas themed thing and a neutral thing at the same time, if that makes sense. Of course, you could also consider doing this not so extremely decorated, like I do it here, but way more plain. <clears throat> Let's say you have these numbers here so that you know where to place your buttons. But then you have only, let's say, only the labels or only the butterflies or whatever you want to have there or like nothing. You could even do this with only the numbers and then add more things during December. You could, of course, say I use this little area of each day um, to be a few minutes creative on that day. And when you then are in front of your snippet roll advent calendar on that day, you can say, okay, I take a safety pin and two buttons and add that here. Or, for example, I got a Christmas card and on the envelope there was a really nice uh, postage stamp. Cut the postage stamp off and glue it on here. Let's say you got the card on December 16th. Take the postage stamp and glue it here. Then it's also a nice memory. Later on, you know then that it was this day. And, you know, you have then, I mean, if you have glued the button there, you wouldn't see the 16 anymore. But you would still have a nice December memory and a memory of that mail you got. You could also use this as a thing where you... Um, collect um, family memories with photos or so. Perhaps you make some Christmas parties during de December. I just wanted to say December. You could perhaps, I mean, where's the difference? <laughs> where's the difference between December and December? And there's not such a big difference. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sorry. I just mixed up the words in my brain. Um, <laughs> perhaps you make some... Christmas parties during December um, and you take photos there, print the photos out in a small scale so that they fit here to your roll and then you could even use this as yeah, like a photo album snippet roll thing. <laughs> Does that make sense? So once you're happy with what you have on your snippet roll here, you can go and search for something where you can wrap this thing around. A mug or a jar or something like that, of course, would make sense. Oh, <laughs> let me first do something else. Otherwise, that is a little bit difficult. I'm going to take just a piece of tape so that I can easily put this on here. I mean, this doesn't need to be here for forever. Yeah, <laughs> When December 25th, oh, this is too long. When on December 25th, I can take this off just by peeling the tape off from here. And then I can use the snippet roll in my journal projects or on cards or so. But now this helps, of course, to have this on here and have it like sturdy on here. We need to start with the 25, of course, because, you know, we have to start at the end of the roll and then we can... Wrap this around here. And then you can take the buttons, put them in here, and you can then display this in your room, in your craft room, or perhaps you want to put that somewhere else, to your kitchen or wherever. You can put that then there and display it like this. And then on December 1st, you can roll it out take the first button out from here and glue or sew the button on here. And this looks a little bit weird from the um, with the angle here because when I would do this, I would, I mean, I would look at it from this angle. It would be in my shelf or on a table or so like this. 
but when I look at it, it's displayed like so, like it's standing like so. And then you would, of course, see it like this. Yeah. And on December 1st, the first button goes here. On December 2nd, the, the second button goes here. And then this will go longer and longer and longer during December. And you can then decorate it with the buttons. If the spot where you store this is not long enough, for example, you have a table and then this reaches the end of the table, you can also consider taking a second of these. I have taken this thing. This is a Pringles package or it, it, this is made from a Pringles package. You could take something second and then, you know, roll this to the second thing and only have the day where you are in December, you know, <laughs> uh, here. So that this whole thing doesn't get longer, like, for example, like this. Does that make sense? If you want to gift this to someone... Um, you could perhaps consider to take a jar or like this little Pringle packaging, Pringles packaging or something similar, which has a, a lid. So when you have this here in the middle <clears throat> and you want to put that into um, a package to send it to someone, the buttons can't fall out and they can't fly around in your package. That is perhaps a little bit more handy. If you have decided to make the roll in this direction so that it rolls out like this, a jar with a lid would make sense as well because if you want to store it like this, the buttons could fall out. I mean, if it's in the shelf like so and you are a little bit careful, it yeah, no, it doesn't work well. No, it doesn't work. I just wanted to say perhaps it could work if you are careful but I think this would totally bother me. Um, the roll I made in the German video, I made in the other direction, as I already told you. So that's the roll from the German video. And here I've just taken a jar with a lid. I have decorated this so that it looks nice when it's in the shelf like so. And you look to it from this perspective. Then this also looks decorated and nice and it looks like part of the roll and when it's then in the shelf like this it rolls out like so and then I can easily open the jar here take the button I need for the day out attach it here or wherever I, I need to attach it depending on the day and then I can easily close the lid here and the buttons can't fall out I will now take these and I will place them in different spots here in my apartment and then I will make a little like video with a little music and then you can see how it would look in like a normal scenery and not only here on my desk. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you like this little idea. Enjoy the next few minutes where you can see how I would display this and perhaps you want to make something like this for yourself or for a crafty friend or perhaps even for a non-crafty friend. <laughs> see you the next time and have a very great day. Bye bye.